And it's all right to put the crankshaft in, so I'm going to put plenty of oil on the on the bearings. This is real thick oil. It's actually Sentinel steam engine crank ace oil. It's, it won't uh, it won't wash off. It won't drain away. So basically, the crank goes in from this end. We've got your centric strap or a centric rod and I did put a pop mark on it so I knew that goes to the front of the engine. Once again a little bit of oil on there. So we'll put that into there, oil into there, that goes through there. The centric strap goes on. And that main bearing goes in there like that so that's basically the crank in place now Let's see it through the hole there right next this end cap has to go on so sticky the oil is this is all clean, it's ready to go, it's been deburred. We'll make a gasket for it. Gasket there. So we'll put a little bit of grease on the gasket just to hold it in place. Also to help it seal. As an oil pipe goes into there and I'm sure that, the, that went to the bottom but I may need to go and have a quick look on the video just to to make sure we can get the oil pipe in that's it down there that is quite a bit of room because you can move the crank round obviously to different different positions In fact, when I look at this, I think that the stud holes are offset. Let's have a look. No, they're not, so it'll go anyway. So we need to have a quick look at the video and see which way. I think it went to the bottom, but I'm not sure. I probably marked this as well. I normally do, but I don't appear to have in this particular case. Right, I've been and watched the, or I've been and looked at the video like a reference, and the oil port goes there. Thank you, this nice sticky oil under here on the seal. See the oil going down through the the port, then comes out of the out of the bearing. Right. So that goes to the left hand side like right, that. I'll get me a new box of screws and we'll put a couple of screws in there just to hold it in place for the minute. This is starting to look a little bit like an engine now. I bought some of these nice big joint screwdrivers from a car boot sale. I'm going to fail the end, if that's going out, it'll be a perfect fit in those screw slots just so we don't round any off. The screws are slightly longer than the original ones, but I don't think it'll do any harm because it'll just go through into the, into the case and there's a hole right through. Surprise how easy these were to get. Uh, there's a company, MS Nut and Bull Distributors near where I live, and they had plenty in stock. They stock loads of old imperial threads. Every time I walk in, you can see them all scattering things to him again. 
you'll be after something or skew off. That is a pop mark there, so I did mark this before I stripped it. I normally do. I'm going to cut these up just to make sure I'm going to be alright. Splendid indeed. Right, we'll file the end of this so it's a good fit in the screws, and I am going to file it, I'm not going to grind it. That's now a decent fit in there, in this slot. I'm going to put a spanner on the handle and just going to the final nip up. Right there, splendid. Right. Go nowhere. Right, final nip on these. An impact driver would have been the other way to tighten these in. But this is doing the job quite splendidly. So I often buy these old screwdrivers, real good material. Show sure the make. British made anyway, so it's a bit of nice gear. So you can see the, the crankshaft going around in all its glory. That's the eccentric strap or eccentric rod that works the valve. Right, the next part to go in is the drive gear for the oil pumps. So again, plenty of oil. And that should simply roll into place and that engages quite nicely and the shaft goes through there you can't put too much oil on when you're building an engine very important for its first few turns in life that it's well lubricated Right, so that's in there now, and we'll turn the crankshaft, you can see how that works. I'm going to put the crank bolt in so I've got something to turn it with. I need to turn it over as a, as a glove screw goes in here to lock the shaft into there. See there's oil holes here, splash oil holes, little drain holes down there. Certainly a well thought out little unit. I'm just going to screw the crank bolt in with a little spacer on the end just to I can turn the engine over. A little bit of grease won't hurt the threads at all. And I can put an adjustable spanner on there and turn the engine over. 
Right, so we need to put the grub screws in here. That's the one grub screw who are there. You can see the mark on the shaft where it's been and the shaft's pushed right home. If I remember correctly, there was one on each side. I do remember correctly, there's only one. That one certainly got a, a good hold of it now. Nice and sticky and thick. The grub screw still in the Allen key. We'll use to remove it. A little bit of tool abuse for the purists. Right, that's tight. That's looking not too bad at all. This is the end that drives the steam oil pump or the, the pump for the, the steam cylinder, the pump that Bob repaired. And when a while ago I removed the oil seal from there and I managed to get a brand new oil seal. Uh, Vitron one a modern oil seal that will go in there and that will do the job no problem at all for that I'm not going to put that bit on yet I'm going to put the oil feed in for the rear main bearing and I think that will about do for this little session right this is the oil pipe I did bend it when I was playing around getting the the set up the work so I'm not quite sure where it's going to be pointing it goes into a, an old union in this end down there and from there it feeds into the into this rear main bearing it definitely wants a little bit of bending I might, in fact I think I will, I think I'll go and soften this, heat it up, nice cherry red, make it go nice and soft and pliable and I can basically play around with it, my heart's content but it does go in there like that. I'm going to soften this, anneal it and then see if I can fit it, see how rigid it is, it's a nice heavy wall copper tube. Right, we've had the pipe cherry red, so now it's it's fully soft, so we'll be able to bend it and play with it to heart's content. Put this end in first, I think this is the most awkward end where it goes into the into this big end, into this main bearing journal. Unfortunately, you can't see in here. You're not gonna, you're not gonna really, what do I mean? Right. It's nice and soft, it's like spaghetti, you can twist it and bend it very easily indeed. One thing I didn't do before I heat it, before I check it, I make sure it's clear, which it is. Come on, bastard features. You'll go in there nicely for me. Make sure you start the unions with your fingers, get them well in before you go near them with a spanner. When you do brake pipes, you always make sure that's started, well started like that. Right, so that's that end in. Now, we'll come to the oil pump end. Crankshaft out of the road. 
it's just about there actually see it's nice and soft and pliable this copper tube now maybe you can see in there I don't know you see the top of me all the torn up come on Just about in. Got a great lot of room in there. That's better. So I can really get me little hands in. Right, that's started. Make sure I've got it well away from the crankshaft, which it appears to be there. Loads of clearance. Yeah. Right, so we can tighten that up now. I'll bring the camera in so you can see where it actually goes. That's a connection in there under the oil pump. And then it goes around the back of there and connects into that. Look at that main bearing. So this is basically all the lube oil side coupled up. I might put some oil in again and run the crank up uh, with a big drill just to make sure it's going to all its relevant places. Right, that's that nipped up. Very happy with that. Progress so far. I think this is one of his best features, this great angle drive here, it's absolutely Gorgeous, I think it's gorgeous anyway. Right, 